This lesson is proving triangles congruent using SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, or HL. We'll be using not every single corresponding part of triangles, but only several pieces. And depending on the information you know, you can show that triangles are congruent using one of these five methods. The first method is SSS, which stands for side, side, side. If the sides of one triangle are congruent to the sides of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So these two triangles have three pairs of congruent sides. I don't know anything about the angles, but I don't need to, because side, side, side is enough. So if you know all three pairs of sides, then the triangles are congruent. Now, as we do various proofs with congruent triangles, you're going to be using information about included angles and included sides. The included angle is the angle formed by two sides. So if you take two sides, the angle in the middle is the included angle. An included side That's the side of a triangle that forms the side of two given angles. In other words, it's the side between two angles. The included angle is the angle between two sides, and the included side is the side between two angles. So, in this figure, angle A is the included angle for segment AB and segment AC. You can see how those two segments form angle A. Angle B is the included angle for segment BA and segment BC. And you can see how that angle is between those two sides. Angle C is the included angle for segment CA and segment CD. And you can see how it's the angle between those two sides. Included sides are just the same. It's the side between the two angles. So segment AB is the included side for angle A and angle B. And you can see that that side is between those two angles. Segment BC is the included side for angle B and angle C. That's the side between those two angles. And segment AC is the included side for angle A and angle C. It's the side between those two angles. So we've got side, side, side as a way to prove triangles congruent. Another one is angle side angle. If you have two angles and the included side, then you have angle side angle. So notice, I have angle B matches angle E, angle A matches angle D, and side AB matches side BE. That's angle side angle, angle side angle. You use the side between the two angles, the included side. Side angle side is when you have two sides and the included angle. So you have two sides and the angle between them. Notice side AB matches side DE, the very next angle. Angle A matches angle D, and the very next side. Side AC matches side DF. Side angle side. Angle angle side is another one. That's when you have two angles and the non-included side. So the side comes after the two angles. So you have angle angle side and then over here angle, angle, side. You're not using the side between the angles. You're using the next side. And the last way to show triangles are congruent is hypotenuse leg. They have to be right triangles. And if you have two right triangles with a congruent hypotenuse and congruent pair of legs, then those are also congruent. 
So those are the five ways that you can prove triangles congruent. Sometimes when you're doing congruent triangle proofs, there's additional information that's not marked, like vertical angles or reflexive sides and angles. Those are probably the most common. So if I have these two triangles, all I know is one pair of angles and one pair of sides. However, the vertical angles are also congruent, even though they're not marked. And now I can see that I have angle, side, angle, which matches angle, side, angle. So those triangles are actually congruent, even though those vertical angles weren't marked to begin with. You might also have reflexive sides and angles. In these two, on this first one, these two triangles share a side right here. So you can use that, and that gives you side angle side, which matches side angle side. This second example, the triangles overlap, and they share this side in the middle. So look for vertical angles or shared sides. And you might also have shared angles. If you have two triangles that overlap like that, you have the angle that they share. And you can use that as well. So look for those pieces of information that aren't marked and maybe they're not given, but you can see from the picture. Vertical angles are always congruent, reflexive sides are always congruent, and reflexive angles are always congruent. So let's determine if the triangles are congruent and which postulate we can use to show that they're congruent. In this example, we're given these two triangles with two pairs of congruent sides. And that's all we know. Well, look for vertical angles or shared sides or shared angles. I don't have any vertical angles, but these do share a side, so I can mark that. So now I have side, side, side. One pair of sides, two pairs of sides, and the third pair that they have in the middle. So they are congruent because of SSS. And then write your congruency statement. The triangle on the top, we can call that triangle ABC. And that's congruent to triangle, well, let's make sure we match up the vertices. In the top triangle, angle A is first, and it's between the side with one mark and three marks. In the other triangle, angle C is between one mark and three marks. The second letter B, angle B is between one mark and two marks. Over here, angle D is between one and two. And the last, the last angle is C. C is between two and three. Up here, A is between 2 and 3, so A will come last there. So write your first triangle however you want to, and make sure that the second triangle vertices match the first triangle vertices. In this one, we're given two triangles with two pairs of congruent sides. Well, two pairs of sides isn't enough. What else do we have? Well, I see these intersecting lines here that make vertical angles. So I have vertical angles there that are in the middle. So I can use those. And now I have side, angle, side on the left, which matches side, angle, side on the right. So these triangles are congruent because of SAS.
Now write your congruency statement. The left triangle we could call triangle ABE, and that's congruent to triangle. Well, angle A on the left, that's between one mark and the side that isn't marked. Over here, angle C is between one mark and the side that isn't marked. So we'll put C first. Then we have angle B, that's the, the one vertical angle, and its pair is also at B. And then last is E. E is between two marks and nothing. D is between two marks and nothing. Write your first triangle however you want to, and then make sure the second triangle vertices match the first one. In this triangle, we have two pairs of congruent angles, and that's all we know. Well, AA won't say that triangles are congruent. So we need more information. Well, these two triangles share a side because of the reflexive side there. So I have angle, side, angle on top, which matches angle, side, angle on the bottom. So we have ASA. Write your congruency statement. The top triangle, you could call that triangle XYW, and that's congruent to triangle. Well, on top, X is the angle that's not marked, and on the bottom, Z is the angle that's not marked. Y comes in the second place. Y has a double arc. On the bottom triangle, Y has a double arc. W is last. W on top has one arc. On the bottom triangle, W has one arc. So match those up like that. Here, we have two triangles with a pair of congruent sides and a pair of congruent angles. Well, AS is not enough, but I do have a pair of vertical angles there. So that gives us angle, angle, side, which matches angle, angle, side. So we have AAS. Now write your congruency statement. Triangle ABE on the left is congruent to triangle well, A is first. It has one arc. What has one arc on the right? That's angle C. B is middle. B has two arcs on the left triangle. The two arc on the right triangle is also B. E is last. E is the angle that's not marked. And D is the angle that's not marked. So there's your congruency statement there. Here, we have two right triangles, and they drew that the hypotenuses are congruent. Well, H is not enough, but I do have a pair of congruent sides in the middle, and that's the leg of the right triangle. So if the hypotenuses are congruent and the legs are congruent, then we have HL. Remember, the hypotenuse is across from the right angle, and the legs are a side that makes up the right angle. So we have HL. So triangle ABC on the left matches what? Well, on the left triangle, side A is between one arc and two arcs, or not arc, but the, the segment marks. And on the right, A is also between one arc, or one one mark and two marks. So it will be A first. B is second here. B on the left is between the one mark and nothing. Between one mark and nothing on the right is angle D. C is last. On the left triangle, C is the right angle. 
and on the right triangle, C is the right angle. So there you go. So you've got your five ways to show triangles are congruent. SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, and HL. If you know enough information to say one of these five things, then the triangles are congruent. Beyond that, you would also know that if they're congruent, then all of the other corresponding parts are also congruent as well.